Hi friends, welcome to the Enneagram Workshop's very first IGTV, and we are talking all about what to do when you don't like your number. A lot of us go through the tests, maybe we take a couple tests, maybe we read a couple books or listen to some podcasts and we're finally like, okay, I think I am a fill in the blank. And then we start reading more about our type and it's like, oh, well. <laughs> And it, it can kind of make you feel like, oh my gosh, I, I think I'm the worst number. And you, you get obsessed with all of the faults that are associated with our particular type. Usually that happens because of a couple reasons. First of all, it's putting words to what we may have always felt. And when you kind of come up to that mirror, looking at yourself without any filters, without any uh, of the things we do to make ourselves look better, or even to our own selves, try to deceive to ourselves who we are, when we read some of these descriptions that are just beautifully, brutally honest about who we are and why we do the things we do, and we come face to face with our shadow side, as a lot of Enneagram teachers call it, it can be a little bit jarring. It can be a little bit unnerving. It can be a little bit like, oof, I do not like that. And here's the good news. All growth is uncomfortable. So if you're feeling uncomfortable, you're on the right path. You are right where you need to be to start moving forward into growth, to start doing the Enneagram work that we're all about here in the Enneagram workshop to uh, become your true self, to become your highest self, and to strip away some of the things that no longer serve us. So that's one reason why we feel like we don't like our number, is that it's reality check. It shows us our shadow side. The other reason why we usually don't like our Enneagram number or feel like it's the worst number is because we're only focusing on the negatives. Now the negatives or the vices or the original sin or whatever you want to call it, uh, it's what we usually resonate with. That's usually where we feel the most pain and where we feel like, oh, that's my number. That's usually when the light bulb comes off, when we see the deception that we're living in. That's usually what makes us come awakened to who we are. And that's a great thing, but if we don't consciously move on from that one characteristic of our number, because that's only one of the many ways to describe our number. If we don't move on from that, uh, we can get stuck there and we can feel like that's all I am. And none of us are just our deception. That's not the fullness of who we are. It's just one part. It's just the shadow. We can't have a shadow without a light. Part of doing the Enneagram work is being able to move on from that shadow side and moving into the light and discovering the beauty of our number, discovering the benefits of our number, discovering the depth of the original virtue. And the original virtue is kind of what we were first created to have and then as we move through our childhood, as we move through brokenness and we put on the mask of our type, we put on the mask of our personality and, and we put up the guards of, well, I have to be perfect or I have to be loved and needed or I have to succeed or I have to be known and have significance or I have to understand all things and have knowledge amassed or I have to have, be secure, have my community around me or I have to have freedom and have options or I have to have control and be able to dominate, or I have to have peace and harmony. Those are every type. I just went from one to nine. Those are all of the masks we put over ourselves um, as we encounter the brokenness of this world. And we kind of push down that original virtue, but it's still there. And part of doing the Enneagram work is coming full circle, being able to pull down that mask, being able to realize that that original virtue is what we were created to be our true self, our highest self. And when we move on from just the pain point of our number, which is how we wake up, that's usually what gets us to be like, oh, well, hello world, and actually come full circle back to our true self. So my encouragement to you is to be thankful. Be thankful for the pain that wakes us up. Be thankful for that uncomfortable feeling that shows that you're on the path of growth. And sit in gratitude. So every time, so this is my first tip if you're feeling um, like you don't like your number very much, my first tip to you is to sit in gratitude for both your shadow and your light. And whenever I teach the Enneagram or I work with small groups of people to 
understand their type, uh, I always tell them before we go into it, before I start listing out all the things and you start feeling a little triggered, because that's gonna happen when you go through growth, sit and breathe for a minute and be thankful. Be grateful for the pain that has brought you to this awareness. Be thankful for the shadow and the light. Be thankful for the journey. And be thankful for the fullness of who you are. And just doing this one little practice of gratitude, I feel like it opens up. So if you are going to do some Enneagram work, if you're gonna do some journaling, some meditation, if you're gonna read some books, if you're gonna go through some podcasts, if you're gonna do some workbooks, I encourage you to take a moment before you dive in, sit with gratitude. Say those mantras over for yourself. I'm actually going to make some um, screen savers that you can download on your phone to just remind you, I am grateful for the pain that woke me up. I am grateful for the shadow and the light. I am grateful for the uncomfortableness that means I'm on a beautiful journey. I'm thankful for the full orbed self that I am. Those four things are gonna take you far. My second tip, if you are not loving <laughs> your number, if you are feeling like you have the worst number, which there are no bad numbers, P.S., if you didn't know that. There are no bad numbers, there are no good numbers. Every number has shadow and light. Uh, I would encourage you to reach out to those around you. It's so funny how we can see the good in other people's numbers. We can see the good in other people and we always have trouble seeing it in ourselves. So I would encourage you, if you have friends, especially friends who know the Enneagram, and if you don't have friends who know the Enneagram, get them to this page. I have an amazing Enneagram journey uh, free class that they can sign up for in the link in my profile to just kind of get them up to speed. You can send them one of your favorite Enneagram book. The Enneagram journey is one that we must do alone, but we have to do in community. Nobody can go on the journey for you, but having people around you, walking alongside you is everything and part of what we want to do here at the Enneagram Workshop is to help create a community and that's soon to come, not yet, but get people around you who know the Enneagram and have a little session where you encourage them in their number and they do the same for you. When you see yourself through someone else's eyes, it can bring a whole new perspective and their view of you is just as valid as your view of yourself. But as we see from many different angles, we start to get a better perception and self-awareness of who we are, the good that we're meant to bring to the world, and again, that original virtue that we were created. Each and every number has a specific thing to bring to this world, has a specific beauty to reflect to others, and we need every single number to have a whole and beautiful society. So those are my two tips for you. If you're not loving your number, practice gratitude, get in a community, and as you dive deeper, really, really force yourself to move on from that awaking pain point of maybe that original sin and pull yourself up to see the full orbedness, which includes that original virtue. Thanks again for being here with us at the Enneagram Workshop. We have so much more in plan as we're just getting started, and I hope that this is just an amazing place for you to start doing that Enneagram work, to move on from just knowing your number but not really knowing what that means, to actually having tangible steps, things you can do every day, day in and day out, to move into growth, to move beyond the patterns that no longer serve us, and to become that true self.